in the woods Afternoon guys, Dave Canberra at the Pathfinder School. What I'd like to do today is I'd like to start a short series with you that's going to go along with our medicinal and useful trees of the eastern woodlands. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make five different videos showing what I consider to be the most effective or the best five medicinal plants of the eastern woodlands because they are both medicinal and useful and in some cases even edible. So again, it's just like the pieces of your kit, you want everything to be multifunctional. And if I can find a medicinal plant that's also edible, that's also useful for other things, then it's a bonus to me. And those are the ones that I want to get to know the best. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about greater mullein. M-U-L-L-E-I-N, mullein, okay? I'm going to take you out, show you a wild mullein rosette. We're going to harvest it. We're going to clean it, process a little bit, bring it back here, and then we're going to talk some more. Stay with me. Okay, this is a mullein plant right here. It's got a spider in it. And it grows in drier areas that are in a lot of direct sunlight. Now they have a tap root, so to harvest this thing, we've got to get below the tap root. That's where a good entrenching tool or a shovel comes in real handy. You just get right behind the tap root and pop it out. Shake it off. You got some root left, cut a little bit of it off. Throw that in a bucket and we'll take that back with us and we'll process it down. Okay guys, so here's our mullein plant that we harvested. And this is a small one in comparison because they get huge. Um, what I'm gonna do with this thing to process it for use now or later, doesn't really matter, is I'm just gonna wash it off and get the roots cleaned off first. And then I'm going to take any dead leaves off of it and just chuck them in the creek. Anything that's yellow like that and dying is going to go. Any sticks or plant fibers I've got in there, I'm going to take out. There's another brown leaf right there. The rest of those aren't too awful bad. Those look pretty good. All right, now, I want to show you while we've got this water right here, I'm going to pull one of these leaves off of here real quick. I want to show you a couple things. First of all, can you see how the water is kind of beading up on that? That's because there's fine hairs all over this plant that are repelling that water. But don't let that fool you because this thing is very, very absorbent. You can see all the water I'm draining out of that. Okay, It's a very absorbent plant. So a lot of the things that you can use this for will have to do with absorption. Okay guys, so we have our mullein process now to a usable form for a medicinal. The mullein plant has been used or recommended for use for over 2,000 years as a medicinal plant for pulmonary and breathing type issues accompanied by cough and cold or caused by cough and cold along with scratchy sore throat you know, hard, dry coughs, things like that. It has a lot of saponins in it, which are the chemical compounds in soap. It also has a lot of mucilage in it, which gives it the ability to be moisturizing. So those two things in combination will help soothe a dry, scratchy, irritated throat. But to process this properly, you'll need to make a decoction from the leaves, and you'll need to use green leaves. Now, because there are so many hairs on these leaves, which we looked at before, those hairs are not irritating to the outside portions of your body externally. Ingesting them, they can be irritating to the throat. So when you make your decoction, in other words, you double boil a tea, you boil it down once, add water, boil it down again to leach all the chemical compounds out of these leaves, you'll then want to strain that through something so that you strain out all of those fine hairs. So our number one use for this plant is cough and cold or any type of congestion. That's the plant's claim to fame. 
but the usefulness of this plant goes way way beyond that and that's why it's in my top five okay so quickly looking at the medicinal values of the mullen plant we know that it's good for cough and cold it's also very good as a decongestant and an expectorant in other words you feel like you're getting a cold so you take that medicinal tea now as far as a decongestant goes you really need to inhale the smoke from this plant to effectively let that happen I'm not advocating smoking to any 12 or 14 year old kids that are watching this video what I'm saying is the Native Americans and people throughout time have smoked mullein leaves and inhaled that smoke to effectively clear their lungs that is a reported property of this plant beyond that type of use obviously it's good for bandages we had it over at the creek we showed how absorbing it was we wrung it out and it got dry almost immediately like some kind of natural sham wow so we know it's a good absorber we can use it for gauze we can use it for stuff in a wound we can use it for female issues there's a lot of things that we can use this for as far as bandaging type things go or absorbing fluids liquids or blood so that's a very good property of this plant as well medicinally so we'll just call that bandages now let's look at this plant as a whole and talk about how it affects our survival priorities and what things we can do with this plant that will affect our survival priorities because that's the way I like to look at things how much multifunctionality does this one single thing have and how can I apply it to each one of my survival priorities because it helps me to break down what that plant will do for me so let's kind of get that on the board and sketch that out real quick and we'll kind of go through that a little at a time hang on okay so let's look at this plant now from a survival priority standpoint and see what it can do for us because I think this is what really makes this plant outshine all the others and that's why this is the number one plant on my list obviously our first priority is self-aid it's great for bandaging it's good for cough and cold it has absorbing properties it has antibacterial properties so it is a very good plant for that it can help me with my breathing so as far as self-aid it's great our next priority should be shelter we've got to control that body core temperature because this plant is so fluffy and hairy it makes a great insulator so we can use this for insulation in our clothes and our boots and it's wicking because it absorbs and it dries very quickly as you noticed over in the creek when we wrung it out so that being the case it makes a good insulator for inside the clothing inside the boots inside a shelter or bed at night very very good for shelter as well so it's great for insulation the next priority to me would be fire all right the mullen plant when the leaves are dead they burn very very well that's why you can smoke them but they also will absorb things so you can use them for wicks for oil lamps grease lamps and things like that that will help you with fire you can also take the stalk of this plant which I will show you pictures at the end of this video but this plant has a very large stalk that comes out of the middle of it that has a flower head running about you know several flower heads to one flower head depending on the plant but they're very tall when that dries out and dies and the flowers are gone you can then take that dip it in some type of fuel like fat tallow oil of some kind and it will burn for a long period of time as a torch the pith inside that stalk okay when you break the stalk open the pithy inside makes very good char it's one of the preferred chars for fire pistons the stalk itself can be tore out at the roots and it will have a very woody tip on the end of it it's a pithy stalk inside but it has a hard woody end at the bottom that you can use for a drill to make a hand drill or bow drill in an emergency doesn't work as well as other things do but it will work I have seen it done so you have char potential 
you have tinder potential in the dead leaves and you also have primitive fire capability with the stock so it can affect fire in at least three different ways and that's not including the torch and things like that okay so continuing on with our survival priorities our next one becomes water but we've already talked about the absorption power of this plant again you know if I take a leaf off this plant and I have a puddle of water a seep I can collect that water up on the leaf and then I can drain it and drink it drain it into my cup whatever the case may be so it's very good for that it's also a decent filter all right water obviously can go through it so it would make a decent filter so I can use these leaves in a worst case scenario to filter out at the minimum particulates from my water so it becomes a filtering agent as well so for water it becomes a collection device and it becomes a filtration device that's two biggies when it comes to water looking at down at our priority list now we have self-age shelter fire water now this is not an edible plant by any means but it can help us to collect food because one of the main chemical compounds in the seeds of this plant in that flower head when it dies and I want to make sure that I read this name correctly because it's one of those ones that I have a problem pronouncing rotenone I believe is the way you pronounce it I'm sure somebody will correct me if I'm wrong but there are about three chemical compounds that are known to be fish poisons juglone is one rotenone is another one the seeds of this plant contain rotenone, so they can be ground up, put into a still form of water where there's a still pool with fish in it, and it will cause the fish breathing problems and make them float to the top for easy catch. So as far as food goes, A, I can use those seeds for, po for fish poison. All right? Excuse my writing, I'm getting down on the board here. The stalk of this plant also makes a decent arrow shaft. If I get the right diameter, a nice dry stalk, it'll make a decent arrow shaft. So again, I appreciate you joining me for another video. I appreciate your support. I appreciate your views. I appreciate everything that you guys do for me, for my family, and for my business. I'll be back with another video in this series as soon as I can.